Not much is known about the rake. This particular entity is rarely encountered. There is very little documentation available for describing it. This video is a compilation of what I was capable of gathering. There are a few well-known accounts regarding the rake. Unfortunately, we do not get to hear much other than these accounts and the little information they can offer us, but it is definitely a starting point for learning about the rake. We need to start somewhere, so here it is. Most of the following research was done in collaboration by a group of individuals with vested interests. These interests are largely based on the fact that they themselves were survivors of direct encounters with the rake. Now here's a compilation of various experiences these survivors found. The first is from a mariner's log and it is dated 1691. It says, He came to me in my sleep. From the foot of my bed I felt a sensation. He took everything. We must return to England. We shall not return here again at the request of the rake. Now this implies some sort of communication between the rake and the mariner, and that the rake somehow convinced or maybe even forced the mariner out of wherever he was and to return to England. The next is a journal entry and it's actually translated from Spanish. It's dated 1880. It says, I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I see his eyes when I close mine. They are hollow, black. They saw me and pierced me. His wet hand, I will not sleep. His voice, and then the rest of the text was unintelligible. Now, another account they found was actually from a suicide note, which was dated 1964. This note said, As I prepare to take my life, I feel it necessary to assuage any guilt or pain I have introduced through this act. It is not the fault of anyone other than him, for once I awoke and felt his presence, and once I awoke and saw his form, and once again I awoke and heard his voice and looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep without fear of what I might next awake to experience. I cannot ever wake. Goodbye. Now, this note was found in a wooden box. Found in the same wooden box were two empty envelopes addressed to William and Rose. There was also one loose personal letter with no envelope. This letter said, Dearest Linny, I have prayed for you. He spoke your name. Finally, here's the main account from one of the actual survivors, one of the actual researchers who compiled the various experiences. This account is from a direct witness. It is from 2006. Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about 4 a.m., I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake him in the process. I apologized and told him I thought he got out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed so quickly his knee almost knocked me out of the bed. He then grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting to the dark for a half second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting and facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a naked man or a large hairless dog of some sort. Its body position was disturbing and unnatural, as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, but more concerned as to its condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. 
My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into the fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry of motion, the creature scrambled around the side of the bed and then crawled quickly in a flailing sort of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds, or probably closer to 5, it just seemed like a while. And it was just looking at my husband. The creature then placed its hand on his knee and ran into the hallway, leading to the kids' rooms. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it crouching and hunched over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in blood. I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my daughter Clara. The creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our daughter. She was very badly injured and spoke only once more in her short life. She said, He is the rake. My husband drove his car into a lake that night while rushing our daughters to the hospital. They did not survive. Being a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and the local television news never followed up either. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house. After we decided to return home, I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in the next town over who had a similar story. We got in contact and began talking about our experiences. He knew of two other people in New York who had seen this creature we now refer to as the Rake. It took the four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet and writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believe to be accounts of the rake. None of them gave any details, history, or follow-up. One journal had an entry involving the creature in its first three pages, and never mentioned it again. A ship's log explained nothing of the encounter, saying only that they were told to leave by the rake. That was the last entry in the log. There were, however, Many instances where the creature's visit was one of a series of visits with the same person. Multiple people also mentioned being spoken to, my daughter included. This led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night, every night, for two weeks. I would tediously scan through the sounds of me rolling around in my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleeping while blurring through the recording at eight times the normal speed. Even so, this still took almost an hour every day. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that must have gone through my daughter's head make me very upset. I have not seen the rake since he ruined my life, but I know that he has been in my room while I slept. I know and fear that one night I'll wake up to see him staring at me. Beyond these accounts and the compilation of these experiences, there is very little information regarding the rake, except for a few other things. The first is a strange will that was left by a woman named Miss Elizabeth Bellow. 
Now, she left behind a video, and in her will, she had it stated explicitly that her family's inheritance not be released until they saw this video in its entirety. And she also declared that this video become a matter of public record. So the video was publicized online. The video describes her experience with this entity. He knew the names of my mother and my father. He said that he knew what they dreamed and that they knew he was called the rake. I'm just going to go ahead and put the link to it in the description. I really suggest watching it because it is pretty offsetting. But it has the potential to provide some more information regarding what the rake is and how it behaves. On a disturbing note, as of October 28th, 2011, which is the time her entire family first viewed this video, five of Miss Bello's relatives have passed away. There is one more potential connection to consider. The rake may have some sort of connection to the slender man, or the slender man may have some sort of connection to the rake. The hypothesis here comes from sigma radiation. Sigma radiation is a strange energy signature that was found in the bloodstream of victims of the rake. This very same energy signature was found in a cloth left behind at the scene of one of Slenderman's victims. This energy signature has never in history been encountered before. In fact, radiation might be a misnomer because it isn't radiation as we know it. The people who labeled it simply needed to give this energy signature a label, so they called it Sigma Radiation. Beyond this, there is not much known about this relationship or this connection between the Slender Man and the Rake. But it is definitely something that needs to be kept in mind and probably will need further research and investigation. So as you can see, we currently have very little to go on. The connections to Slender Man seem to be the most recent data gathered about the Rake. Perhaps further investigation into this relationship will yield useful information. However, anyone doing any such investigation should remain cautious. We do not know exactly how or why these beings behave the way that they do. But if we seek to prevent further dangers and prevent further victimization, then we must push forward in our exploration of this phenomenon.